Hi, this is Will Murray for Educator.com, and we're talking about the addition and subtraction formulas for the sine and cosine functions. The basic formulas are all listed here. We have a formula for cosine of a minus b, cosine of a plus b, sine of a minus b, and sine of a plus b. So unfortunately, you really need to memorize these formulas, but it's not quite as bad as it looks. In fact, if you can just remember one each for the cosine and the sine. Maybe if you can remember cosine of a plus b and sine of a plus b, uh, we'll learn later on in the lecture that you can work out the other formulas just by uh, making the right substitution into those two starter formulas. So if you remember what cosine of a plus b is, then you can substitute in negative b in the place of b, and you can work out what the cosine of a minus b is. And the same for sine of a plus b. If you can remember the formula for sine of a plus b, you can substitute in negative b for b and find out the formula for sine of a minus b. So you do have to remember a couple of formulas to get started, but after that you can work out the other formulas by some basic substitutions. So it, it's not uh, as bad as it might sound in terms of memorization here. There's a couple cofunction identities that we're going to be using as we prove and apply the addition and subtraction formulas. So it's good to remember that cosine of pi over 2 minus x is the same as sine x. And the similar identity, sine of pi over 2 minus x is equal to cosine x. And those aren't too hard to remember if you kind of keep a graphical picture in your head. So let me show you how those work out. Let me draw an angle x here. And then the cosine and sine, remember the x and y coordinates of that angle. So that's the cosine. And that's the sine. And pi over 2 minus x, well, pi over 2, remember, of course, is a 90 degree angle. So pi over 2 minus x, we just go back x from pi over 2. There's x. And then that right there is pi over 2 minus x. And so if we write down the cosine and sine of pi over 2 minus x, this is the same angle, except we've just switched the x and y coordinates. So pi, when you go from x to pi over 2 minus x, um, you're just switching the sine and cosine. So that's kind of how I remember that cosine of pi over 2 minus x is equal to sine x, and sine of pi over 2 minus x is equal to cosine x. So we'll be using those cofunction identities, um, both to prove the addition and subtraction formulas later on, and also to figure out the sines and cosines of new angles um, as a quicker way than using the addition and subtraction formulas. So let's get some examples here. Uh, the first example is to derive the formula for cosine of a minus b without using the other addition and subtraction formulas. And there's a key phrase here. It says, without using the other formulas. The point of that is that once you figure out one of these formulas, um, you can figure out a lot of the other formulas from the first one. So if you can figure out one formula, you need one formula to get started, because otherwise you kind of get in a circular logic loop. But you need one of these formulas to get started. And, and we'll have to go through a bit of work to prove that. But then figuring out the other formulas from the first one turns out not to be so difficult. So what we'll do is we'll work out the formula for cosine of a minus b. And then in a later example, we'll, we'll show how you can work out all the others just um, from knowing the cosine of a minus b. So this is a bit of a trick. It's probably not something that you would easily think about. It really takes a little bit of ingenuity to prove this. Uh, we'll start with a unit circle. So there's my unit circle. And I'm going to draw an angle A and an angle B. And I'm going to draw an angle A over here. So there's A, this big arc here. And I'll draw B a little bit smaller. So there's B. And then A minus B is the difference between them. So this arc between them 
is going to be a minus b. That's a minus b in there. And now I want to write down the coordinates of each of those points. So the coordinates there, I'll write them in blue, are cosine a, the x-coordinate, and cosine b, the y-coordinate. That's, that, that's uh, the coordinates of the endpoint of angle a. In red, I'm going to write down the coordinates of the endpoint of angle b, cosine b, sine b. And now I'm going to connect those two points up with a straight line. And I want to figure out what the distance of that line is. And I'm going to use the Pythagorean formula. So remember, the distance formula that comes from the Pythagorean formula is you look at y2, or sorry, um, you look at the differences in the x-coordinates, so x2 minus x1 quantity squared plus y2 minus y1, the change in the y-coordinate quantity squared. You add those together and you take the square root of the whole thing. So that's the distance formula. And here, the x2 and the x1 are the cosines. So my distance is cosine of b minus cosine of a. Actually, I think I'm going to write that the other way around as cosine of a minus cosine of b. Cosine of a minus cosine of b. Doesn't matter which way I write it because it's going to be squared anyway. Plus sine of a minus sine of b squared. And then I have to take the square root of the whole thing. And to get rid of the square root, I'm going to square both sides. So I get d squared is equal to cosine a minus cosine b squared plus sine a minus sine b quantity squared. So that's one way of calculating that distance. Now I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to take this line segment d and I'm going to move it over, move it around the circle so that it starts down here at the point 1, 0. So there's that, that line segment again. Um, but remember, the, the line segment was cutting off an arc of the circle exactly equal to a minus b, exactly equal to an angle of the size a minus b, which means that that point right there has coordinates cosine of a minus b, sine of a minus b. So that point has coordinates cosine of a minus b, sine of a minus b. And now I'm going to apply the distance formula again to the new line segment in the new place. And that says, again, the change in the x-coordinates plus the change in the y-coordinates. Square each one of those and add them up and take the square root. So d is equal to change in x-coordinates. That's cosine of a minus b. Now, the old x-coordinate is just 1 because I'm looking at the point 1, 0. So that quantity squared plus the change in y-coordinates, sine of a minus b. Minus, now the old y-coordinate is 0 squared. And then I take the square root of the whole thing. And again, I'm going to square both sides. d squared is equal to cosine of a minus b minus 1, quantity squared. Plus, now sine of a minus b minus 0 is just the same as sine of a minus b. So I'll write this as sine squared of a minus b. Now what I'm going to do is look at these two different expressions here for d squared. 
Well, if they're both describing the same d squared, they must be equal to each other. So that was kind of the geometric insight to figure out, uh, to get me an algebraic equation setting a bunch of things equal to each other. From here on, it's just algebra. So we're going to set these two expressions equal to each other. Um, the first one is cosine A minus cosine B quantity squared plus sine A minus sine B again quantity squared is equal to the second one cosine of A minus B minus 1 quantity squared plus sine squared of A minus B. Now I'm just going to manipulate this expression, expand it out, cancel a few things, and it should give us the identity that we want. So remember the difference of square, the, the square formula, a minus b squared, is equal to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. We're going to be using that a lot because we have a lot of, uh, difference of, of squares of differences. So on the, on the first term we have cosine squared of a minus 2 cosine a cosine b plus cosine squared b plus sine squared a, expanding out the second one, minus 2 sine a sine b plus sine squared b is equal to cosine squared a minus b minus 2 times 1 times cosine of a minus b plus sine squared of a minus b. And now there's a lot of nice ways to, to invoke the Pythagorean identity here. So if you look at this term and this term, cosine squared a and sine squared a, that gives me a 1, minus 2 cosine a cosine b. Now I have a cosine squared b and a sine squared b, so that's another 1. Minus 2 sine a sine b is equal to now look, cosine squared a minus b and sine squared a minus b, that's another one. And it looks like I forgot one term on the line above. When I was squaring out cosine of a minus b minus 1 squared, I got cosine squared of a minus b minus 2 cosine of a minus b, and then there should be a plus 1 squared, so there's another 1 in there. So there's another one in there, minus 2 cosine of a minus b. And that's it, because we already took care of the sine squared a minus b. That got absorbed with the cosine squared of a minus b. So there's a lot of terms that will cancel now. The ones will cancel, 1, 1, 1, and 1. Those all cancel. And so we're left with minus 2, I'll factor that out, cosine a, cosine b plus sine a, because I factored out the minus 2, sine b is equal to minus 2 cosine of a minus b. And now if we cancel the minus 2's, look what we have. We have exactly cosine a, cosine b plus sine a sine b is equal to cosine of a minus b. And that's the formula for cosine of a minus b. So that was really quite tricky. The key uh, element of that is that we did not use the other addition and subtraction formulas. We really derived this from scratch, which means that we can use this as our starting point. Later on, we'll derive the other addition and subtraction formulas but we will be able to use this one to get started. So the others will be a lot easier. This one was trickier because we really had to rely on uh, geometric ideas from scratch. What we did was we graphed this angle A 
and angle B, we connected them up with this line segment D, and we found the length of that line segment using the Pythagorean distance formula. And then we did this very clever idea of translating, of moving that line segment D over so that it had a base of one endpoint at one zero, and we found another expression for the, the uh, length of that line segment, or the distance, um, also using the Pythagorean distance formula, but starting and ending at different places. So we got these two expressions for the length of that, that line segment D, and then we set them equal to each other in this line. And then we got this sort of big algebraic and trigonometric mess, but there was no more real geometric insight after that. It was just a matter of sort of expanding things out algebraically, using the Pythagorean identity to cancel some, some uh, things that kind of collapse together, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1, and it all reduced down into the formula for cosine of a minus b. So now let's try applying the uh, addition and subtraction formulas to actually find the cosines and sines of some values that we wouldn't have been able to do without these formulas. So in particular, we're going to find the cosine and sine of pi over 12 radians and 105 degrees. So let's start out with cosine of pi over 12 radians. So cosine of pi over 12. Now that's not one of the common values. I don't have that memorized. Instead, I'm going to write pi over 12 as a combination of angles that I do have the common values memorized for. So here's the trick. Remember, pi over 12 is equal to pi over 4 minus pi over 6. That's because pi over 4 is 3 pi over 12, and pi over 6 is 2 pi over 12. So you subtract them, you get pi over 12. And the reason I do it like that is that I know the sines and cosines for pi over 4 and pi over 6. So I can use my subtraction formulas to figure out what the cosine and sine of pi over 12 are in terms of pi over 4 and pi over 6. So I'm going to use my subtraction formula. Cosine of a minus b is equal to cosine a cosine b plus sine a sine b. And here the a minus b is pi over 12. So a and b are pi over 4 and pi over 6. So this is cosine of pi over 4 minus pi over 6, which is cosine of pi over 4 cosine pi over 6 minus, or sorry, plus sine of pi over 4 sine of pi over 6. And now, pi over 4, pi over 6, those are common angles that I have those sines and cosines absolutely memorized. So I can just come up with those very quickly. Cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. The sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. And the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So those are values that I have memorized. You should have them memorized too. And now we simply combine these. Uh, root 2 times root 3 is root 6. And I see I'm going to have a common denominator of 4 here. And root 2 times 1 is just root 2. That gives me the cosine of pi over 12 as root 2 plus root 6 over 4. And I'm going to work out sine of pi over 12 very much the same way. It's the sine of pi over 4 minus pi over 6. And so I remember my formula for the sine of a minus b. It's sine a cosine b minus cosine a sine b. So I just plug that in as sine of pi over 4 cosine b is pi over 6 minus cosine of pi over 4 sine of pi over 6. 
And so sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Minus cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. And sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. And so again, I have a common denominator of 4. And I get root 2 times root 3 is root 6 minus root 2. So what we did there was we just recognized that pi over 12 is pi over 4 minus pi over 6. And those are both common values that I know the sine and cosine of. So I can invoke my cosine and sine formulas to figure out what the cosine and sine are of pi over 12. So now let's do the same thing with 105 degrees. We'll do everything in terms of degrees now. I know that 105, well, to break that up into some common values that I recognize, that's 45 plus 60. So I'm going to be using my addition formulas now. I'll write those down to review them. Cosine of a plus b is equal to cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. And while I'm at it, I'll remember that the sine of a plus b is equal to sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. So the cosine of 105, that's the same as cosine of 45 plus 60. So using the formulas with a is 45 and b is 60, I get cosine 45, cosine 60, minus sine of 45, sine of 60. And again, 45 and 60 are both common values. I've got the sines and cosines absolutely committed to memory, and hopefully you do too by the time you've gotten this far in trigonometry. Cosine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. Cosine of 60 is 1 half. Sine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. And the sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. So I put those together. Common denominator is 4. And I get square root of 2 minus the square root of 6 as my cosine of 105. Sine of 105 works very much the same way. We'll write that as sine of 45 plus 60 which is sine of 45 cosine of 60 plus cosine of 45 sine of 60. And now I just plug in the common values that I have committed to memory. Root 2 over 2. Cosine of 60 is 1 half. Plus cosine of 45 is root 2 over 2. And sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. So common denominator there is 4. This is root 2 plus root 6 over 4. So that was a matter of recognizing that 105 degrees, it's not a common value itself, but we can get it from the common values as 45 plus 60. Those both are common values, so I know the sines and cosines, so I can figure out what the sine and cosine of 105 is by using my addition and subtraction formulas. I'll mention one more thing there, which is that we could write 105 as, if we convert that into radians, that's 7 pi over 12 radians. Remember the way to convert back and forth is you just multiply or divide by pi over 180. And then 7 pi over 12, well that's the same as 6 pi over 12, otherwise known as pi over 2, plus 1 pi over 12. And we figured out what the sine and cosine of pi over 12 were in the previous, on the previous page. So once you know the sine and cosine of pi over 12, you could work out the sine and cosine of 7 pi over 12 by doing an addition formula on pi over 2 plus pi over 12. 
So this is really an alternate way we could have solved this problem, given that we had already figured out the sine and cosine of pi over 12. So let's try another example there. We're going to use the addition and subtraction formulas to prove a trigonometric identity, sine of 5x plus sine of x over cosine of 5x plus cosine of x is equal to tangent of 3x. And it really may not be obvious how to start with something like this. Um, the trick here is to write 5x, is to realize that 5x is 3x plus 2x, and x itself is 3x minus 2x. So if we start with a equals 3x and b equals 2x, then 5x is a plus b, and x itself is a minus b. So that's what the connection between this identity and the addition and subtraction formulas is. We're going to use the addition and subtraction formulas to prove this identity. And let me write them down now and show how we can combine them in clever ways. I'm going to write down the formula for sine of a minus b. Remember that's sine of a cosine b minus cosine a sine b. And right underneath it, I'll write the, the formula for sine of a plus b, which is the same formula, sine a cosine b, with a plus, plus cosine a sine b. Now I'm going to do something clever here. I'm going to add these two equations together. And the point of that is to make the cosine A sine B cancel. So if we add these equations together, on the left hand side we'll get sine of A minus B plus sine of A plus B. Remember, if we're, you're thinking in the back of your head, A is going to be 3x and B is going to be 2x. So on the left side we've really got now uh, sine of x plus sine of 5x, which is looking good because that's what we had in the identity. On the right side, we get um, 2 sine a cosine b and then the cosine a sine b's, they, they cancel. That was the, the cleverness of adding these equations together. So we get 2 sine a cosine b. And so now if I plug in a equals 3x and b equals 2x, I will get sine of a minus b is just sine x, plus sine of a plus b is 5x. And on the right hand side, I'll get 2 sine of a is 3x, cosine of b is x. So that seems kind of hopeful because that's something I can plug into the left-hand side of my identity and, and see what happens with it. Before we do that, though, I'm going to try and work out a similar kind of formula with the addition and subtraction formulas for cosine. So let me write those down. Cosine of a minus b is equal to cosine a cosine b plus cosine is the one that, that switches the positive and the negative, plus sine a sine b. Sine, oh, whoops, I wanted to figure out cosine of a plus b is just the same thing changing the, uh, the positives and negatives. So cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to add them together in order to make them cancel nicely. So on the left hand side I get cosine of a minus b plus cosine of a plus b is equal to 2 cosine a cosine b. And that's it because the sine a and sine b cancel with each other. 
And again, I'm going to plug in a equals 3x and b equals 2x. So I'll get cosine x plus cosine a plus b is 5x is equal to 2 cosine a is 3x and b is 2x. So let's keep this in mind. I've got an expression for sine x plus sine 5x and I've got an expression for cosine x plus cosine 5x. So I'm going to combine those and see if I can prove the identity. I'll start with the left-hand side of the identity and I'll see if I can transform it into the right-hand side. So the left-hand side is sine of 5x plus sine of x over cosine of 5x plus cosine x. Now, by what we did on the previous page, I have an expression for sine of 5x plus sine x. That's 2 uh, sine of 3x times cosine of 2x. So that's by the work we did on the previous page. And then also on the previous page, cosine of 5x plus cosine of x is equal to 2 cosine of 3x times cosine of 2x. So that was also what we did on the previous page. But now look at this. The cosine 2x is cancel, and what we get is 2 sine of 3x over 2 cosine 3x. The 2's cancel as well, and we get just tangent of 3x, which is equal to the right-hand side. So we finish proving it. The trick there, and it really was quite a bit of cleverness that might not be obvious the first time you try one of these problems, but you'll practice more and more and you'll get the hang of it, is to look at this 5x and x and figure out how to use those in the context of the addition and subtraction formulas. And the trick is to let a equal 3x and b equal 2x. And the point of that is that a minus b will then be x and a plus b will be 5x. So that gives us the expressions that we had in, in the identity here. And so once we see a minus b and a plus b, it's worthwhile writing down the sine and the cosine, each one of a minus b and a plus b, and kind of looking at those formulas and kind of mixing and matching them and finding something that gives us uh, something that shows up in the identity. Once we get that, we start with the left-hand side of the identity, we work it down until we get to the right-hand side of the identity. So we'll try some more examples with that later.